Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this session. My name is Francis, and I'm coming from Heidelberg University. I'm part of the GI Science Group. And uh, I'm a PhD student, and I'm working on OSM road quality. So I'm going to talk about road. And uh, if, <coughs> if any of you have ever projected or wondered that there's going to be a time where AI use is going to be regulated, then the time has arrived because in the EU, there is a law that was passed last year, December, and uh, basically a regulation on how AI should be used in, in the European Union. And um, I just picked a section to just give you a clear about how we are trying to see how this can be used in the OSM community. So the EU says, one of the clauses says that if you use AI to build anything that has the likelihood to represent a human act, you need to clearly state and make it clear that this is coming from AI or this is coming from human by labeling it. And <clears throat> this is not something new in OSM community, but this is something that we, I think, has been overlooked because it hasn't really become a, a, a big issue yet and we want to i'll be showing you some of the things that we have we have done so basically what the least in the least case scenario when the ai i think so far at microsoft and the facebook data that we have on roads and when it came initially we suspected that people who had chance to hold on to the data they could be osm contributors or anyone ended up importing these data into the OSM uh, data. And basically, it's, it's as a result of uh, maybe competition, anxiety, wanting to get their numbers up and sharing it with their friends. But on a higher level, there has also been research that states that large imports on a country level, so this is a research done, and it talks about large import that, that was done in India in 2015. That shows that there has been a large import of data into the OSM uh, database, but then there was no indication we could not find it in the, the chain catalog. And so <clears throat> these are instances, or these are things that happen. And what we basically want, want to do is to ask ourselves, is it possible for us to really tell if someone puts in an AI data and does not state that it is AI, is it possible for us to tell whether it's coming from AI or human beings? So we had a hypothesis, and the hypothesis is that the humans are going to have some inconsistent patterns in the way they map, while the AI, because it's an algorithm, is supposed to show some sort of pattern. So our, our objective is to be able to identify these patterns and to be able to tell if we can separate these two. So what we did first is to first take the only available AI data that we have. So we took the one from uh, Facebook and the one for uh, Microsoft, and we merged them together to create one data set representing pure AI data for us. And then we, we needed to find the human data, but all of us know that the data in OSM is already mixed with so many other things. So we needed to come up with a criteria. Our criteria was basically to look at time. So we plotted the uh, Using the awesome dashboard, the, those of you who don't know awesome dashboard is built with, by Highgate. So awesome dashboard allows you to track some of the, do a lot of analytics and the quality control on the OSM data. So using the awesome dashboard, we try to plot the number of data that is imported into OSM over time. <coughs> and then we try to identify suspicious points where we think that there was an importation. So if you look at the, the big jump or the big hike, we just assume that ordinarily in the trend that we see, it wasn't a usual trend to see the amount of data in that short period of time. So it's likely not a human mapped data, but it's a data that is imported from somewhere. We don't know yet, we are not saying those data is coming from AI or official data set, but we needed to get a point to be, bring a separation. So we did that, and then we separated the period into two what we call the pre-importation and then the post-importation. And so we picked <coughs> the 
This is done in Ghana because we had to run different country to see where we can find this pattern. So Ghana was one of the places that we found this pattern. That's why we chose Ghana. And we had to go back in time to 2015 to take data from 2015 to represent human data because our assumption was that I think the first one that came was somewhere 2017. And so by 2015, we don't expect to have AI data imported into, into OSM. So at the moment, time was the only criteria that we used. Uh, to simplify the methodology, we just converted the data into, we projected it and then we calculated the, the length of each of the segment. And then we also use an indicator we call the node density. The idea is that the number of nodes that are used to map a particular row segment per particular length would differ from human to human but AI is likely to provide some sort of consistency in it. And so <coughs> with this, we try to explore. So this is the pure AI, and we're trying to see if we can establish some footprints for the AI. And at, as you can see, the, we can see some patterns in there. This structure, we can get about five different groups or five classes of length and uh, the amount of node that is used to, to map it. And we, we want to say that though we are saying AI, we, our method did not take into consideration official data set. And also, we also assume that it might not, what we are parting we are seeing might not necessarily come from AI, or it's not 100% coming from AI. It might also be influenced by the post-processing method that is being done after the data is, uh, is acquired, because we know the data comes from the AI, it will be a raster and it's been converted to vector. It is not yet sure how the algorithm for converting data from raster to vector works on which particular ones are used by the organizations. And I think they are here, so they can help us clarify that. But <coughs> we assume that this is also possible, and this is what this might be causing that. So we suspect that official data set might have a similar pattern, because that is also having this, this kind of post-processing done on them. And so we try to plot, again, looking at the node density, the number of nodes that humans map, used to map a particular root segment of a particular length. And as you can see, there's, there's no pattern. It's a lot of randomness in the human one that we use. And <clears throat> this pattern made, us, made it clear to us that the, the humans independently sitting alone in their different areas map differently, but then the AI doesn't do that. So we, this, we, our hypothesis was that we, there is a relationship between the length and the number of nodes. So we decided to look at the relationship. This doesn't give you clear uh, distinction between them, but the, one on, the blue one is the human mapped one and the red one is the AI one. The, we figured that this is because we, we saw three, five different classes and we've put all the five different classes together. So we decided to split them into different buckets by uh, putting each length of the AI, each group into one bucket and analyze them on that level. And so we did that into five buckets. And this is basically giving you a visual inspiration of um, how each of the buckets, so the Horizontal, or the x-axis is representing the various bins from zero to four, and then the number of nodes that are used. So this is just giving you an impression of how it's done. But in each of the bin, this is what we see. Uh, this, the, one, the blue one is still the human one, the red one is the AI one. And in bin two, we see this pattern as well. And we come to bin three, uh, bin four. Only in bin five, that we see some similarity between AI and then a human. And remember, we said that we didn't take into, ac into account official data sets and other data sets that are imported into OSM. And so we are assuming that these are the outliers that are giving us different. But the AI pattern was more consistent if we look at them. And then the human one was also consistent. But it is clear that the same root segment, the same length is being mapped with different node density or number of nodes with the humans, but there's some sort of inverse relationship between the length and the number of nodes the algorithm uses to, to map this. 
And then we decided to see if we can be able to use this to detect AI data in the, in the data set. So what we did basically was to set a threshold, knowing that we know the length now. So we set a threshold, a lower threshold and an upper threshold. And then we use that to um, <coughs> separate the AI. We use that to separate the AI. But there is also a tendency that humans can map, like the number of nodes a human being uses to map a particular length could also be the same that humans, uh, the AI uses. So we try to assess the uncertainty in it. And this is more like looking at the intersection of how many nodes are mapped in the AI data set that is also the same in the human data set that we use. And if you look at them, we have uh, one for the human, one for the length. We also look at how many length is likely to be the same as the, the AI length. And all of them uh, give us this uh, statistics. Basically, generally, uh, over 90% of the time, the AI is distinct and it's clear from the human one. So our take home lesson, we know that there's a, we can discern as early uh, if the data is coming from AI. Uh, we don't know the precise mechanism that this work, we're still not clear about the precise mechanism that the AI uses. But then we know that there's some sort of inverse correlation between them. We know that human mappers also um, lack uniformity, and this is coming from their individual practices, their mapping experience, the objectives behind whatever they are doing when they are mapping and stuff would, would cause these variations in them. And <clears throat> we, know that we believe that this understanding can be used. We are trying to uh, clean up our method a bit, but this understanding can be used to build tools that can enable us to identify and quantify the proportion of AI data in the data that people download. We are not saying that AI data is wrong. We are saying that people have the right to know the amount of data that they are using because the origin of the data influences the use of the data. What you use the data for actually depends on where the data comes from. So we want people to have that kind of uh, um, control. We also believe that this can also be used to integrate into existing editors to alert, flag, or tag instances where AI data has been imported into uh, OSM without declaring the right origin. So it can be put into our existing uh, editors, or a new tool can be built for this as well. Currently, we have ongoing pro project. We are standardizing our method, and we are applying this in Tanzania, Malaysia, Vietnam, USA, and then India. I'm sure Meta knows why we chose these countries, but we, we knew that they had worked around this area, and they had some tags. They have been able to tag the so we can be able to use that to verify our method. So currently, we're working around these countries to standardize our method, and we, we are open. Everything that we do is open source, so we are open if you want to uh, work with us for the results that will come to implement it in your existing editor or maybe collaborate on a new tool that we can use. So we say that the, well, the core value of OSM is that it was created by humans, and we have to make sure we provide transparency, and we have to preserve the values that OSM stands for. And so people should not just import data into it without clearly de de declaring where the data comes from. And this is very important for data quality from where we, we come from. OK, so I, I'm sure I have like a minute. So if anyone have a question for me, I can take it. If not. I have a question for you. What do you think this insight can help you in your work? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so these are these are different buckets. So this is bucket three. And this is this is likely to happen because Facebook gave us only data that is missing in OSM. So they are very, very short. Whilst uh, Microsoft gave us data, they gave us everything. So when we merged them, there were places Microsoft AI wrote covered that Facebook didn't cover, and there were places that Facebook covered. So these short, short things are coming from the merging of the of the data sets, I believe. Yeah. Second would be a different question. Um, 
Yeah. We didn't really um, look at the editors. Like I said, the only criteria we use in this method was time. But the current one we are doing, we're trying to find more other parameters that is likely to help us clearly know that this is coming from humans or not. If you have ideas, I will take it home. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, if, if you have ever inspected the, the data, you realize that the AI captures both the curve and the straights. And so we actually visually inspected the data. And I know when it's a curve, you are supposed to use more uh, nodes to be able to get a good curve. But I think we, we looked at that, and it's, it might be a contributor, but the pattern is very clear. 